<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to episode two of It's, it's a, a Classic. classic. <laughs> and today um, I'm with Prendy and I'm Katie and we're going to be talking about the um, classical links that we really think run through mostly Barbie but also a little bit, little bit of Oppenheimer. So crucially today we're talking about the Barbenheimer box office um, phenomenon. And our first parallel is Barbie with Athena. Athena and Barbie obviously have a lot of parallels. Athena is of course the immortal goddess who is the patron goddess of, um, of Athens. Uh, and so of course she doesn't have any kids, doesn't want them, doesn't need men. In the same way that the Barbies obviously don't need men either. They run their city. They're the Nobel Prize winners. They're the judges. He's just There's Ken. a female president. Yeah, he's just Ken. Ken's are just the kind of appendage to the Barbies. I just don't know who I am without you. You're Ken. But it's Barbie and Ken. There is no just Ken. Another link between Barbie and Athena is that they are both guides. Just as in the Barbie film, she goes from the Barbie world to the real world and guides um, Gloria. Athena also in the Odyssey, of course, does this with the eponymous hero himself. Um, so she'll save him when Poseidon is thrashing him about in um, some waves, for example. I can do everything myself. Huh. Is that any way to speak to your protector? Moving on to the second link that we found, um, which is between uh, masculinity or patriarchy and horses. So Greta Gerwig um, says that she finds it very funny because Ken can't tell whether the horses are in charge or whether it's the men when he gets to the real world because all of the historical figures that he sees immortalised in paintings and in statues are men riding horses. So naturally he isn't sure whether the horses control the men or whether it's the other way around. Um, and this is, you know, the core tenet of patriarchy as Ken sees it. It's the one bit that he's, you know, really interested in. Um, in the classical world, horses are also a big deal. Um, chariot racing means that horses are synonymous with masculinity. And when it comes to fighting and armies, um, those that have a cavalry are already successful. So looking at Pompey the Great specifically um, in the Battle of Pharsalus against Caesar, it becomes a case of infantry versus cavalry, and in this case, it's the it's the cavalry that win the day. So really, Ken is correct. Um, horses... He's Ken off. He's Ken off. The third link that we thought was quite interesting was Weird Barbie as the Sybil. So in the Barbie movie, Weird Barbie lives in <laughs> her own secluded area of Barbie land, and she explains to Barbie that the reason that she's thinking of thoughts about death and she has cellulite on her legs is because there's a wormhole <laughs> from one world to the next. Come into my weird house, hi! I'm Weird Barbie, I am in the splits, I have a funky haircut and I smell like basement. This is very much the role of the Sybil in the Aeneid. So the Sybil is a kind of oracle who explains to Aeneas, the, the hero of um, the Latin epic, that he needs to go down to the underworld and um, she, her cave is kind of at the entrance of the underworld and she even tells him, like the weird Barbie does, how to get there. So just as the weird Barbie tells Barbie that she's gonna have to go on the little boat um, and then eventually onto the, um, the rollerblades. On her quest. Exactly. Um, the Sybil warns, Ine tells Aeneas that he has to break off a golden bough and also tells Aeneas, just as weird Barbie does, that the journey there and back it's not going to be easy. What do I have to do? You have to go to the real world. You can go back to your regular life, or you can know the truth about the universe. The choice is now yours. The first one, the high heel. You have to want to know, okay? Do it again. The next point is drawing a link between Medea and Jason and Barbie and Ken. So in the Medea Jason story, um, the two of them go to a new land and he essentially screws her over in favour of a new ideal um, and a new woman. And Ken does a similar thing. I mean, he, you can talk about maybe the homoeroticism of him screwing her over for patriarchy rather than for 
a new woman, but maybe that's I'm for another day. You're convinced. I'm convinced. Good. Um, yeah, Barbie doesn't exactly enact her revenge in a, in the same way as Medea does. Um, you know, murdering her children and riding off into the sky in a flying chariot. But she does use trickery um, in order to get rid of the patriarchy and restore Barbie land to its former glory. Um, yeah, exposing the unfairness and, you know, how, how it hurts everyone. So it's sort of a similar female cleverness wins the day type situation. Now I'm going to quickly talk about uh, the mythology of Oppenheimer, mostly because we're not as interested in it, but also because there is one quite obvious one. So just as Prometheus steals fire and brings it down to the humans, Oppenheimer has taken on the power of the god in founding this nuclear age. Um, and becoming the destroyer of worlds. So we're kind of mixing in some Hindu scripture with ancient Greek myth to create this American yeah. Prometheus legend. Um, so weirdly enough, uh, the quote from the Bhagavad Gita, I am made, I am become death, destroyer of worlds. Um, he apparently actually didn't say at the time, but it's become synonymous with him now. Um, so yeah, we think it's relevant. And this is really tenuous, but here we go. Um, just as Oppenheimer becomes the destroyer of worlds, so too does Barbie, arguably. Um, America Ferrera's character, Gloria, is, is thinking about the inevitability of death um, and impending doom, and this manifests itself in Margot Robbie's Barbie, who is suddenly having all of these doom and gloom thoughts um, and has to go to the real world to fix the issue. Um, and obviously then Ken exports patriarchy from the real world into Barbie land. So technically Barbie land is kind of destroyed. I mean, obviously it, it, it gets fixed um, once Ken loses interest and realizes that patriarchy isn't all about horses and that it's actually bad for everyone. But unfortunately humanity doesn't have the same redemption arc and can't go back from um, <laughs> nuclear fission. Just as I suppose Prometheus, once he gives uh, fire to man, he cannot take it back. Shall I go? Thank you very much for watching. If anyone is still watching, we appreciate it. Um, and see you next time on another episode of It's a Classic.